Well, good morning, Living Water. Good morning. You look looking good. Those of you also online, you guys look great, right? So uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, uh, I was talking to somebody in the first service and says, um, the wife tell him, hey, look who's, who's here, the guy that came last year. Do you remember? Like, no. Uh, and she goes, well, wait until he starts speaking. <laughs> and I start speaking and my accent comes out. I say, oh, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> you have to make a little extra effort, right, when, to, when you deal with speakers like me. We, we have an accent. So um, anyway, well, it's an honor to be here. It's a, always an honor to be here. And uh, congratulations, you guys, 10 years. That's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, we're so excited. Um, I didn't know that. And, uh, you know, usually when, when you, you're a guest, you want to say something nice and, and that's appropriate. And uh, it doesn't feel like I have to because it's honestly from our heart. Every time I, like, like John said, every time we have an opportunity to be together, it's, it's very special. Uh, every time that he talks in, in, in different settings, uh, it, there, there's a level of, of wisdom and discernment in the things of God that only somebody close to the Father's heart ha- can talk that way. That's your pastor. It's pretty powerful. And not only that, but every time in, he shares stories about you folks, uh, about your resilience, about the ma- amazing things that God is doing in, in, in your lives. And he, as a pastor, he's, so, he's bragging and he's so proud of what God is doing in your lives. You know what? Only people, only pastors that love their churches deeply can talk that way with sincere love for, for, for the people. And that's your pastor. So um, 10 years, it shows, is a testimony of their faithfulness to God. It's a testimony of the love that they have, that, that they have for all of you. And, and it's amazing what, what God is doing here, living water. I mean, it's, it's one of my favorite places to come now. Um, Every time I come here, um, there's something special. I mean, I don't know what it is, but, but uh, even this time when John asked me, hey, you need to come back, and I start praying about it, there's so much of the Holy Spirit during this season as I prepare to come here and I've been praying for you. Uh, I believe there's something very, very, very special. But before we go into the Word of God, I forgot last time, I remember this, to introduce my family. So I have a picture here of my family. Somebody's starving. Okay, there we go. There we go, my family here. Um, uh, as you can tell, the good looks of my kids don't come from my side of the Jesus, <laughs> right? So um, I've been married to Karen. This year is going to be her 25th wedding anniversary. So it's been that long, right? Yeah, she was like 12, 13 when we got married, right? So she looks very young. But uh, we have three boys. Our oldest is 22. He lives in, in, um, in California. Right now, our family lives in Nolensville, Tennessee, which is 30 minutes south of Nashville. Um, and, um, but my uh, oldest son just went to college there and didn't like it, so he went back to California. My second one, the dark guy with the sunglasses, his name is David. He's 21, and he is in the, in the spectrum of autism. So even though he's 21, he's, he's way processing mem- brain is of a seven-year-old, okay? So he's still out, is innocent in so many awesome ways. It makes for really fun conversations. I'm telling you that. And then my youngest one, Caleb, he is seven years old, okay? So um, they're, a, a, they're a blessing. Uh, so a lot of stories I could tell you about them. They're the joy of our lives. Uh, and um, it, it's amazing how God, um, you know, when a family is just so special. So I wanted to bring this because we feel like this, is, this, is be, this place is becoming very special and dear to us. So uh, actually, they were watching earlier the, the first service online. And they said, ah, we love it here. It, it's a great service. So, so uh, kudos to all of you. Then keep reaching people online as well. Amen? Amen. So um, I want us to, to go into the Word of God today. And um, uh, as I was asking Pastor John about how you guys doing, and, uh, he was sharing an amazing place that you guys are uh, seeking the Lord in the, during this season. Um, you, you, you've, been, you've been taking this season to pray, to, to fast, to, because you, you, you desire to develop um, a, a new season in your relationship with the Lord. And you want to go deeper and, de- and develop new patterns in, 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 your, in your spiritual journey that will bring you closer to God. And I'm listening to this, and man, I, I have to tell this to the church. I highly commend you to, for that. Because, uh, uh, you know, you, you can do this game of going to church every Sunday for, for years. 
Uh, but you are willing to say, no, we, we want more of God. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We want more of God during this season. And, and, and Jeremiah 29, 13 says, hey, listen, if you seek the Lord with all of your heart, you will find him. And I believe this is going to be a powerful season um, to find the Lord. And, and, and I'm in a similar kind of quest, desire, passion. Um, I've been also praying and fasting during this season. I really believe that God has uh, great blessings for, for, for this time in, in, in the world and for his, his, the body of Christ. And, and more grace and more love um, for us. And, and I, I, as I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to bring to this, this precious church? The Lord started to give me a word. And during this season, I mean, I, it's coming and coming and, and I, was, I was sharing with John I believe this is what God has for, for, for this church and it's powerful I'm excited to, to bring you this uh, because you know especially at the beginning of a, of a year many of us we, we've done this uh, the word of the year right I did that for years, right? I had the, the word is uh, abundance, praise the Lord. A good look is there, blah, 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 praise the Lord. Uh, the, we get all this stuff, but this is more than that. This is way more powerful than a focused word. I really believe this is a prophetic declaration of the spirit of the living God over this church, over your personal lives, over your marriages, over your families, over your finances, over your health. I mean, it, it, because that's what God loves to do. So, Living Water Church, please open your ears yeah. to listen what God is proclaiming over your lives, over this, this precious church. And really, the word that God is giving you has to do with breakthrough. Everybody say breakthrough. breakthrough. And I really believe this is the prophetic declaration for you. The slide here and the next slide. Here, there we go. He's coming. He's coming. So here we go. This is, this will be a season of breakthrough in my life. Amen. 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 Through three amens. Amen. This will be a season of breakthrough in my life. In fact, why don't you tell the person right next to you, okay? Right next to you, tell him, hey, this will be a season of breakthrough in your life. Go tell him. Declare that prophetically. Okay? This will be a great season of breakthrough in your life. Now, let's go really quick on the next slide. This define, you know, when you go to the dictionary. This is a pretty dictionary definition, okay? It says this. A sudden increase in knowledge and understanding that overcomes challenging obstacles and leads to a dramatic and important discovery or development. What in the world that means? <laughs> right? That's a whole dictionary definition. Well, we can see that because we use this word often in our culture when we talk about science and, 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 and progress, right? Oh, there's a breakthrough in this medicine or breakthrough in this area here. And, and, and so we talk about, yeah, going through obstacles and finding a solution. And it's kind of like revolutionary and it's pretty powerful, right? I like this definition better because it's a little more down to earth. It says to overcome long-standing and significant challenges resulted in a greatly anticipated achievement or victory. I like that. Yeah. Many of us can relate to that. Many of us can say, yeah, I would, I would love to see a breakthrough in my life in so many different areas in my life. And, and the good thing is, as we follow Jesus, as we follow God, we can expect breakthroughs as we surrender our lives to him. We can expect that that's part of the deal. That's part of, of following Jesus. So rather than becoming anxious or or reacting poorly when we face a challenge. We as followers of Christ, we can take ground in God's promises. Like Pastor John was saying during communion, that his promises are yes and an amen. And that we can trust that. And that what God is going to do in our lives is real, is powerful. And he's going to change our lives. It's transformative. And he's not going to be only just for this church uh, as a church. But also personally in, in, in your marriage. For those of you that are single, in your singleness as well, in your finances, in your family life, in your business, in your places of work, in your relationships, in your health, in the dreams that you have for the future, in all those areas of our lives. So to proclaim an expectation for breakthrough is not like, real, like, like a weird thing. It's actually very normal and rooted in scripture. When you follow Christ, you will see this. And today, I want us to look into a passage 
in the Old Testament that is actually really, really powerful to describe the way that God brings breakthroughs in our lives. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. If you don't have your Bibles, don't worry. We're going to uh, uh, project the, 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 the part here in, in a minute. But before we go and read that passage, start in verse 17. Let me just give you the context because this is, this is part of, of a time of King David. Maybe, maybe some of you are just starting to follow Jesus recently. You haven't read the Bible that much, but you know that King David is one of the big characters in the Old Testament, right? Everybody talks about it. We know many stories about it, but it's a pretty inter- interesting story. When we find out is that David, when he was a, a little guy, he, he was a shepherd, and, and God wanted a new king, and he tells Samuel the prophet, hey, go to Jesse, the father of David, and among, among their sons, there's going to be a king. And then uh, the story goes, and Samuel goes, finds the, Jesse, and says, hey, I'm going to anoint the king here between your sons. So they bring all the sons, and God says, none of them is. And so, so Samuel goes, Jesse, don't you have another son? And he goes like, no, 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 re- oh, oh, wait. I think there's another one somewhere, you know. That shows you big dysfunction in that family. So we already from the get-go know this poor kid. He's, he, we can say somehow he is not included. He's probably rejected in many ways. He's dealing with, uh, you know, uh, a lot of stuff. Therefore, he's that not to even count on him when a prophet comes and says, where are your kids? So you can tell like, oh, wow. And then we can go later in the story. And he's still a young, probably a teenager. When he, the famous story of David and Goliath. The one that probably most people are familiar with. But not only that, it's, it's just David starts to get too close to King Saul. And, and, and he sees in Saul like probably the father that he never had. So he, he started clinging a lot of affection, a lot of dreams. Oh man, this, the, the king of Israel is, is like this great guy and I'm going to follow him. And he's so loyal to him. He fights for him. He does all these things for him. I mean, he's, he's just so loyal to him. And then we find out later that King Saul kind of gets jealous, right? That God's favor is over David and he tries to kill him. And not just like, like, eh, die. It was like literally like hiring assassins, throwing spears at him. I mean, the thing was real to the point that David has to run away and hide. And what the story tells us is that then David find refuge among the enemies of Israel, the Philistines. I mean, you can guess it's pretty bad when the safest place is among the enemy of your people. Isn't that crazy? So David ends up there and, and, and Saul is after him. He tries to kill him many times and God protects him and all that stuff. You probably heard of that story many times. And, and it was devastating for him. You cannot imagine. I mean, or probably we can guess how painful it was to be hidden in caves and, and away from family and away from what was familiar. Because if you, if you would just go out there, you will be killed. And that's how he lived for many, many, many years. Until one day in battle, King Saul and Jonathan, David's best friend, died. And it was devastating. I mean, David's heart broke that day. And we know all this, how difficult all this season was. Being persecuted and being heartbroken. Because he writes it in the Psalms. Two thirds of the Psalms is David just... Putting out there his brokenness. How broken he was. When God didn't answer his prayers. When things were so challenging and difficult. When the precious people that he loved that were gone. All those things are out there for us to see. That the man after God's own heart was a broken man. Now we come into this, this part of the story. When then after King Saul is dead. The people of Israel comes. You know what David we would love for you to be the next king. And they anoint him king. His life completely changed overnight. He becomes the king of Israel. One of the first things that he does in this transition is to conquer the city of Jerusalem. He goes to the city of the Jebusites and he takes it away and he conquers the city. And is that when we get into the story that we're going to be reading? Because now the enemies of Israel, the Philistines... They see this as a great opportunity. They see the vulnerability here of Israel. Because they thought, hey, you know what? There's a transition here. It's a political transition. 
This is election year, and people are going to be so dumb that we're going to go and get them. <laughs> That's how it was. So the Philistines are planning and plotting to go and destroy Israel. What they have done for many, many years, generations, they will do is they will come to Israel, they will invade the land, and they will oppress the Israelites, drain their lives, the living lives out of them, I mean, and then leave them miserable and leave again. That's what they were planning to go. Now we're going to pick up the story here. 2 Samuel chapter 5, starting verse 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to look for him, but he heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out for battle in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? And the Lord said to David, Go up. For I will certainly hand them over to you. So David came to Baal Perazim. And he defeated them there and said the Lord. Watch this. The Lord has broken through my enemies before me. Like a breakthrough of water. So he named that place Baal Perazim. Which means master of breakthroughs. David got to know God. He knew God in so many different ways. But this is a fresh revelation for David. He declared, God is my master of breakthroughs. Living water, God is your master of breakthroughs. He is the one. He is the one. Now, let's take a look at, at this story. A little bit of David's breakthroughs here. So we're going to see it here in the slides. Yeah, the Philistines, they were generational enemies of Israel. They constantly reemerged to oppress the people, to violate them. And this place, the Valley of Rephaim, it was a very strategic place. When you look at it geographically and the way the trade was made, if, if whoever controlled that area will control the source of, of, of progress, right? So it was important for the enemy to conquer this because it will interrupt Israel's survival and flourishing. It became like it's a stronghold that needed to be conquered repeatedly. This was also the area where David knew it very well because this is where he was hiding from Saul for many, many, many years. So he knew the importance of, of this area. And every time that the enemy controlled this valley, Israel experienced the worst of the worst that could happen in, in their history. That's when they were experiencing dryness. Nothing would work. Right? They were experiencing barrenness. Every, all the work, there they was, they was a lot of effort and very, almost not, 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 not fruit. There was a sense of desolation. They were constantly discouraged. There was a sense of confusion. How come God, you, we're your people. Why we're living this way? There was a sense of hopelessness. And, and, and the way that we read in this, in the, in this passage... David looked at it, if we, if we like images to, to understand what, what, we're, what we're experiencing, this is probably what he saw in, in his heart. This is how, we, how life is, and it shouldn't be that way, you know? And, 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 and in, the, in the middle of this dryness, in the middle of all this chaos, and God starts to do something amazing. The situation, yes, is extremely challenging, but God reveals himself to David. As he takes him through a breakthrough. Hope in life started to reappear. And then this is how God, David starts to look at his life. Something started to bubble up. God started to intervene. And something powerful happened. And then this is what, the, what David declares. The Lord has broken through my enemies, enemies before me. Like a breakthrough of water. Wow. And then he declares, this is the proclamation. This is the prophetic proclamation of David over his life and over Israel. The Lord is our master of breakthroughs. This is powerful. Now, when you look at this, man, you, you will say, you know, Lord, I never knew I was worshiping the master of breakthroughs. Do you know that you worship and follow the master of breakthroughs? That's the one that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And, and this is not just a promise for David or for a few lucky people. No. This is a promise that applies to each one of us. In each area where the enemy comes to oppress us. 
Now, how that breakthrough can look into our lives? Well, in the next slide, I have three bullets there. Yeah, we, we have a sworn enemy that constantly reemerges to oppress, to steal, to kill, and destroy. You know that, right? And if you don't know this, sorry, bad news. That's the kind of enemy that we have. We have a strategic places for our survival and flourishing, don't you think? And the enemy is going to attack those in particular. They're strongholds. They need to be conquered repeatedly. I said this in the first service. That's why our marriages are very important and very key places that we have to constantly fight for. Because the enemy is going to try to come and plant seeds of, 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 of junk. Now, you single people, don't feel excluded on this. Because your singleness is also as crucial as your marriage. That's why the enemy wants to plant all kinds of junk in your singleness. Very strategic places. And and believe me, if you're single, don't think that marriage is going to solve all things. And if you're married, don't think that getting rid of this person is going to solve all things. Right? Right? But you see, God wants us to overcome all this dryness, barrenness, desolation, discouragement, any kind of confusion, any kind of hopelessness. God wants to declare himself, I'm a master of breakthroughs through all those things. Now, I'm aware that we live, you guys live here in in a place where this picture of David with desert dry doesn't probably relate to you. I get it. But let me bring four other pictures that probably you can probably... (laughs) Kind of relate a little bit better so we can understand what the breakthrough, that, that, that revelation that God, that God gave to, to David. So maybe that, that will be a little more helpful for you to relate to. The first one here, it's a breakthrough from dark seasons and life storms. I know you guys here in the Pacific Northwest can relate to that one because you have gloomy skies all the year, right? All year long. And um, you can relate to that. And I know how exciting it is when there's like days of darkness and clouds and then the little like new sun is coming and everybody's excited and Instagram goes crazy because all the people in Seattle taking pictures. (laughs) But you see that's, you will understand that. That's how God wants to bless your life. So whatever sense of darkness and storm you're going through, the master of breakthroughs is here. To bring his light of his love. Amen. Another picture that you can relate to is this one. Maybe it's a breakthrough from past wounds and recurring sinful behaviors. And, 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 and many of you, you can picture this. You can, you can find yourself in your past is so binding and so restricting. Some of you in your mind, you're just, you just made your mind. And hey, you know what? My past is, is, is just too awful. I will never be able to enjoy good things in life. It could be sinful habits. I guarantee you that this altar has many times, many of you, you have come, oh God, forgive me. I don't want to do this again. I did it again. Please set me free. And you feel good for a few days. And then you fall back again. And you feel like, God, I want to leave this behavior. I want to stop doing this thing. I cannot. Because it feels that, that, that you just stuck with it. But the Lord is declaring today, this season will be a season of breakthrough. This thing that you've been struggling for so long, I'm going to set you free. I'm going to set you free in Jesus. He is the master of breakthroughs. So you can probably relate to this picture. Maybe the next one is breakthrough from barrenness, unfairness, and injustice. And we can go through barrenness literally as, as, as pastor and probably John as well. We have prayed with so many couples and couldn't have babies for years. And the pain of what that, that sense of uh, lifelessness feels and the brokenness that that brings. But it's not just that literal. It can be barrenness in, in your relationships, in your marriage, in your business, in your finances. Man, you work so hard. You were so hard, and the fruit is so little. I relate a lot with business owners, because I, I also own my business. I have, a, I have a business. I flip homes in Nashville. Uh, I'm not in a TV show, by the way. Like, no, no, no. I watch them, and, but um, I flip homes, and I can understand that. When you work so hard, 
so hard and the result is so little. And, and you feel like you're trying to, to find some life in the middle of so much difficulties. It's when you deal with situations when people treating you unfairly, when you're a victim of injustice, something was done to you and you got stuck and you cannot believe that something good can come out of it. But listen, I hope that this picture is your picture in a few years because you will see life going through that barrenness in the name of Jesus. The next one, you probably can relate as well. This is probably of all four. The, I can relate to all of them, believe me. But this one is probably the one that I can relate mo, mo, the most in this season of my life. Because sometimes the enemy, what he does is, is causing us to, to feel so um, uh, paralyzed. We see the challenges ahead and, and we would love to go and climb those and conquer those challenges. But... We look at ourselves and like, there's nothing in me that can go and, 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 and deal with this. There is a sense of, 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 of paralysis. You don't know what to do. You're probably very confused. You don't understand. God, I don't get it. I've done everything right. I did everything the way it's supposed to be. And now look what I have. There is a sense of scarcity when we feel like I don't have enough. I would love to get to those places where God wants me, but I don't have the right, enough education. I don't have the right relationships. I don't have enough money. I don't have, and this is, this is like, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. When in Jesus, you have everything that you can ever need. And the Lord is saying, I'm the master of breakthroughs and I'm going to come into your life and I'm going to show you that everything that I said in your life is going to come and be fulfilled. So I don't know which one you relate the most. Maybe all four of them. But I can tell you this. God is going to do something powerful in you. I wish I have a lot of time to, to share a little bit of my story in detail. But I can, I can briefly say, you know, when I grew up, I grew up in Colombia, in South America. And, and my parents were very, very young when they got married. Like teenage young. And so they didn't know much. Um, so obviously... Me and my sister, we grew up in, in a lot of dysfunction. Um, this dysfunction created a lot of things that um, kids probably shouldn't go through. So when I, the time I was in elementary school, um, I realized I wanted acceptance. I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be um, loved. And I started to act up to get that kind of love. Just an elementary school. Because human beings, believe me, God did not create us to feel rejected. Rejection is not part of God's design. Not at all. So we tried to cope with it. So at that early age, I started to, you know, pick up certain things, certain habits, certain behaviors. And then I realized, you know what? I, I, I can get attention if I do certain things. It got so bad at one point, my parents... You know, even though they were not believers, they have the Catholic background. Because everybody over there is Catholic, no matter what. But they believed that I was demon-possessed and that I needed an exorcism. So they took me to a special church to exorcise kids. That's what, I mean, that was that bad. And um, things were bad, bad, bad. I was feeling, I, I remember a, a, as a 9, 10-year-old feeling like nobody loved me. That I had to just perform. And every time I tried... I was falling short. Then Jesus comes into my house. My parents get saved. And things started to change. And then I started to look at certain things. And this is awesome. God loves me. That's why I got sold out. Then I have a God that loved me and cared for me. Just accept me just as I am. So I was, this is awesome. I can follow. So I remember 12, 13 year old giving my heart completely to Jesus. And I'm telling you, I was probably the most crazy teenager following Jesus. I was so in love for Jesus. I was like, I mean, I was, but all that to say, I realized that a lot of this thing of the past didn't go away just because I was following Jesus. Now, if you're really part of emotionally healthy spirituality, of course, you will understand that one thing is true. You may have Jesus in your heart, but you still have grandpa in your bones. <laughs> And then you start to realize, oh my gosh, I'm still have all these dysfunctional 
ways of doing, but it was so deep Then as a teenager, I nobody helped me in this. At that point, it wasn't God's plan to him. I just grew up in the church with all these dysfunctions, but I was really good covering it up. And one thing that I learned is, you know what? Because I want people to like me, I know how to put a facade in every single setting so I'm liked and well-loved. So at church, I was Fernando. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. At school, I was Fernando, but a different version. I was like, hey, what's up? You know? And in the neighborhood, I was like, Fernando, the cool kid, and everybody wants to hang up. And I started to build all these personas. It was exhausting trying to please everybody because I wanted to be liked and want to be loved. I grew up that way as a teenager. I went to college that way, getting even worse. And then I get into marriage and into ministry with these deep, deep, deep issues never addressed until the Lord one day said several years ago, Fernando, I want to bring breakthrough in your life. This thing is going to this. And it already started to create so much problems in my marriage and in my ministry. Thank God. Thank God that all those years ago, the Lord declared this proclamation over my life. I will bring breakthroughs. I am the God of breakthroughs. And I surrendered to that. And I started to see amazing progress in my life. It's unbelievable. Now, I wish I can tell you that now today, all these years later, ah, no, I'm still dealing with these battles because certain strongholds, you have to keep going back and conquer them back for the glory of Jesus. Maybe that's what some of you are this morning. You need to get back to those places. Then you need to reconquer again for the glory of God. And this is something that is probably the most important thing. If you forget everything that I have shared today, if there's one thing that you need to remember this, is this. As I prefer, prepare for a breakthrough, I need to expect something to break in me. Friends, I am not going to give you this fluffy Christianity stuff. I will be honest and tell you this. If you want a breakthrough in your life, get ready to be broken. You may say, Fernando, what kind of message is this? I thought you guys were gonna, you came here to encourage us. It's the most encouraging thing that I could tell you, friend. Because God loves to act in the midst of our brokenness. And sometimes that brokenness just happens to us. But very often, we have to be the ones willing to come and say, Lord, I am yours. Break me. What is what why I'm acting this way, Lord? Why I haven't been able to endure all these blessings that I'm supposed to have? What is it in me that is not cooperating with you? And get a little bit curious about yourself, but expect something in you to break. And this is so important because very often we like to focus on external factors like other people or the circumstances. So even we reflect that in our prayers, right? So if our marriage is not good, we say, oh, God, please just change this man. God, just, just in the name of Jesus, just, just break him. You know, and, and when the reality is, no, Lord, maybe you need to break me. But when we pray, oh, God, just remove this, this job. This job sucks, God. You, you, you give me a good. No, no, maybe the job is actually really good. The one that needs a little bit of change is you. Something in you needs to break. And this is so hard, friends, because this is when you're going to look and realize that God loves you so much, even though with your broken side. For someone like me to struggle with people pleasing, it was so hard to recognize, I'm a liar, Lord. And the reason why I have so many difficulties building relationships is because I'm fake. But would you please break me? So I can be more honest and more sincere. I was a prayer many times, many years ago. I started to pray in my marriage. Lord, I'm not perfect. I'm expecting my wife to be perfect. Lord, that's wrong. Would you please break me? There has to be a break in before there's a breakthrough. 
So one of the best prayers, two things I want to give you today. One of the best ways to pray right now, if you want to receive a breakthrough, is this. A prayer for a breakthrough right here in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the slide. The next one. Let's go to see. My prayer to break in. Dear Lord, what's to be, what needs to be broken in me? Maybe the Lord say, your pride needs to be broken. The way that you control and you want to control circumstances needs to be broken. The way that you think about this needs to be broken. The way that you treat people needs to be broken. And we do it in a, I mean, the way when God points those things, he doesn't do it with anger, like mean spirit. He does it with his love and his grace. Because with the same breath that he's telling us, he's telling us that he loves us. And that he loves us so much that he is not willing to leave us the way that he found us. So he's going to change us and he's going to show us that. Oh, my dear friends, I pray that you can. This is what true Christianity is really about. It's to come in that vulnerable place with God. So that's your focus, to identify the fears. Sometimes the Lord, the Lord tells me, you're afraid of people. I say, no, I'm not afraid of people. Yes, you do. You're afraid of people walking away from your life. That's why you just play all these games. I say, like, oh my God, you're right. So Lord, will you please help me? I'm afraid of people. It was one of breakthrough years ago. That's powerful. I wanted people who rejected me or hurt me to pay, right? Because we go to that side too. Oh, God, you just, you, you just got them. Get them, God. Justice. You're the God of justice. And the Lord says, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. But what about praying for you? What is, needs to be broken in you? That's my break in. Now, the master of breakthroughs, the breakthrough starts his miraculous work when something breaks in me. All those things. Sometimes a dream needs to be broken to be restored. Oh, that hurts. My codependency on things or people they need to control. My need to control. They need to break. We need to break those things. Because it's interesting. Always, every single time, every single time, brokenness reveals unhealthy patterns. And these are healthy patterns, are like ruts in the road. In this, this line, let's try to go to the next one. You know, ruts, I mean, you have beautiful roads, but sometimes it's just what, one way to go to point A and B, somebody just goes, you know, years ago started all these freeways, all these roads that you have. You just started one day, one somebody just pulling a cart, and then the other person just following through years, created bigger grooves, and somebody else, hey, let's put a little bit of gravel here, and then let's put a nice paved road, and, and now we have all these roads that take us from A to B. So that's why when you get hurt and offended, all you need to do is walk this path. And the Lord is saying, enough. I'm going to break all the stuff. Because the old way cannot work. As pretty as it is, and as uncomfortable as it is, I want, to, I want you to build new ruts, new ways for you to deal with the things that you always have dealt with the wrong way. And that's powerful. So that's when you break out. Because in order to get a breakthrough, you need to first break in and then break out so there can be a breakthrough. Yeah. And my second prayer for breakouts. In fact, why don't we read all this together? Ready? Go. Lord, give me the courage and grace to break out from whatever holds me back, from compromising situations to unhealthy mindsets, and creating me new pathways for miraculous breath. See, from compromising situations to unhealthy mindset. Maybe God is saying, you know what? This relationship that you have going on, you need to stop this. Maybe God is saying, you know what? This thing that you're doing is not right. This way that you're processing this pain and hurt is not healthy. And then, Lord, create in me new rods, new ways. Your path, God's ways are much better than our ways, friends. And that's what God has for us. So I want to close with a couple of thoughts. 
because I believe God has something powerful for you, friend. Some of you are here and you haven't really verbalized this, but you have said to the Lord in, in, in the depths, you probably even, even haven't had the, the ability to even speak your words, but in your spirit, you're saying, God, I'm tired of this. This is not what you have for me. I know this is not what you want from me. And that's the enemy coming one, once again. And Lord, would you please, would you please set me free? And the Lord is saying, of course, I will set you free. I am the master of breakthroughs. And this is the season. This is my proclamation over this church. This is a proclamation over each one of your marriages, over all of you that are single today, over your finances, over your future, over your dreams. God is a God of breakthroughs. He's the master of them. And he's going to break you in so you can break out, so you can break through into what God has for your life. And I will receive that every single day of my life. Would you say amen to that? Amen.